This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics, and we promise to do our best to keep it both insightful, but brief. If you haven't subscribed to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or other podcast platforms where you can find us, I strongly encourage you to do that. Once you subscribe, you will be getting the episodes of this show on your device as soon as it's available. In this episode, we have Ina Somovska, Senior User Acquisition Manager at Highly. Ina, welcome to the Bins of Us podcast. Hi. Super happy to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is great. Thank you for coming. Okay, it's 2024, and we're all supposed to talk about generative AI 24-7. But remember what was the center of attention for so many app marketers before that, before the chat GPT arrival, right? TikTok and marketing your apps on TikTok. For many folks, it's still the center of their attention. While the platform, despite a number of looming threats to be banned, most notably in the U.S., is there and thriving. Today, I have Ina to share her best practice for doing app marketing on TikTok. But before doing that, Ina, to kick off, uh, tell us about yourself. Tell us your background. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Ina Sumovska. have been working in the performance marketing field since 2018, so almost for six years. For the last three years, I work in with TikTok solutions. If be more specific, I know how to promote apps on TikTok. I started as a user acquisition manager for the dating app called Tammy. And uh, yeah, I launched campaign for this app on TikTok, scale uh, campaigns on TikTok. And later I switched to network site, which means that I started work as a client solutions manager for TikTok in Berlin office. I assisted app clients to run campaigns on TikTok, analyze campaign scale. And uh, yeah, I learned uh, a lot from my clients, but this September I returned back to client uh, user acquisition side. So currently I am senior user acquisition manager for the dating app called Highly. Actually this September I returned to the same company that I had been working before I joined TikTok. And uh, this, I just like, uh, like to joke uh, that, yeah, that was a plan to go to TikTok to figure out all the secrets about optimization and algorithm and then uh, return back to the company to implement all this. But actually it just like a joke. It was like a coincidence. Uh, but yeah, in a nutshell, that's it. Uh, currently, I'm also uh, responsible for this channel. So uh, I'm running scaling campaigns on TikTok. We did a really great job during Q5, uh, You just for one day. But uh, uh, still, we was on the first stage. Uh, I mean, the number of downloads in North America within dating niche. And this is a, a nice uh, a nice achievement as well, because, you know, there are like a lot of uh, well, well-known well brands there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you got your degree in TikTok and got back to yeah. use that knowledge. Oh, this is great. So um, tell us about uh uh, highly, and um, how's it different from other dating apps? Because we all know Tinder, it became kind of a verb, you know, Google, Xerox, uh, Tinder is, more, it's almost like a you know, uh, synonym for dating. So how Healy, sorry, Highly is different from other dating apps? Yeah, yeah, good one. Okay, I would mention three points. The first is like, we believe at highly that dating should be fun, but not stressful or frustrating. That's why we, co- we focus on conversation between singles and give them different kind of tool for meaningful interactions. For example, we do have like icebreakers. This is like a personalized messages that help you to start a conversation or maintain the conversation on our dating app. The second is safety. 
we do have this feature when you can um, call a person, not like sharing your personal mobile numbers or personal pages on Instagram or other social media, because safety for us is really, really important. And then, of course, we use AI to learn more about your preferences, um, values, priorities, interests to, to focus and to, uh, we do have like a compatibility quiz to show you the percentage of uh, your love or friends compatibility with someone. But by the end of the day, I would say you always need to have some other options, right? I heard a lot from my friends who use dating apps that even though they try like Tinder, Bumble or some other dating apps, from time to time, they are open for some new options. And they say, okay, I just want to give a chance for something new. Let's see how it works for me. Uh, I say that my friends told me this because I never uh, use dating for myself just because uh, I I'm joking that I'm too senior because in my time people met in person. I met my husband uh, nine years ago, I guess, yeah, in the CrossFit box. So uh, even though I know how to promote dating apps, I never use it for myself. But to get this insight from time to time when I uh, hang out with my friends, I can say, OK, give me your phone. I want to uh, make some like matches for you. And, you know, I'm I'm really good at this. So that's why I'm joking. OK, if you if you need some cool matches, just give me your phone and I will do it for you. And yeah, but I heard about a really nice feature that uh, Tinder launched, I believe, a couple of uh, months ago. Um, this is like a super cool because uh, even though you don't need, for example, dating for yourself, you can uh, use this app to find out some uh, interesting matches for your friends. And then you can send the link to your friend and he or she has like 24 hours to get in touch with this person. And this is really nice because in this case, they really extend their audience because come on, we all know about Tinder. So in this case, they really extend it. And this is really, really cool. I never tried for, for my friends, but yeah, I heard a lot. I believe last year, end of last year, they, they run the, this kind of campaigns uh, about this feature. Yeah, that's an interesting um, move on their part. This is one of the things that big brands do when they need to grow uh, even bigger because there's always this kind of a plateau, the threshold where yeah. they've reached like... Um, there's a this big um, um, period of growth, uh, but then inevitably uh, you have to deal with uh, this situation where the previous tricks, previous tools do not work as efficient as they used to. So you try new things and this kind of a, I don't want to say a referral, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a referral thing you're suggesting okay. to somebody. Um, so yeah, it's a, a, that's a nice trick. Um, and you've mentioned that you guys are using uh, AI for your uh, app, for your platform. And I wonder one day, uh, generative AI chatbots will be dating on apps themselves once they become conscious. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> but once they will, uh, it will be there. They will need <laughs> apps to date, date each other. Uh, okay, but jokes aside, um, one of the things that is essential for uh, marketing is having a framework. Uh, any marketing campaign is rather a marathon than a sprint. So you don't, if you don't have a framework, a plan to stick to, you won't go anywhere. Uh, you need to have the basis, uh, the procedure of, of uh, things to do on a weekly basis. Um, you do certain actions, you measure the result, you assess, uh, okay, what do I see? How do you adjust my uh, my actions on a daily basis? So what is your framework to work with TikTok as a marketing channel for apps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a good one. So I would say, first of all, before I start to answer the question, uh, you need to understand that there is still a difference between TikTok and other social media because TikTok is not like a regular social media. You don't go to TikTok to check TikTok. You go to TikTok to have fun, to entertain, to educate yourself. So that's why TikTok, this is like the world leading entertainment platform for short videos. 
And this is all about the community. So that's why to be the part of this community is to collaborate with those guys, with the creators. So that's why the first um, main point to, to succeed on TikTok, you need to be part of this uh, community and you need to collaborate with creators. Um, the second one, speaking about like uh, paid promotion, because um, uh, today I will be speaking more about uh, specifically paid promotion, you need to use the smart setup for your creative testing, because creators, they create for you videos, uh, but then you need to have a really smart setup for your creative testing to understand how it's better, what kind of optimization to use, uh, and then the third one, and it's a super and really important to analyze creatives deeply because uh, content is the key and this is not like the news for us, but you need to understand a lot of tiny details can impact the results, impact the core of the audience. So that's why, yeah, if to sum up, if you want to succeed on TikTok, collaborate with creators, use the smart setup for your creative testing and analyze creatives deeply. Um, what I mean, for example, about uh, use smart setup for creative testing. In my case, even though I run um, the main performance with purchase optimization, I do test with install optimization simply because I run SCAD. And in this case, I don't need to meet privacy threshold. I can use lower budget uh, to understand my top performance. And I have specific benchmarks for CPM, CPC, CTR, conversion rate. So I also analyze like upper funnel events as well to figure out my top performance. And I also have these kind of benchmarks, for example, uh, 10K is enough for me. I mean, 10K impressions is enough for me to understand if this specific piece of content has potential or not. So there is something that I, I want to, 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 to dive deeper to give you more um, understanding of what I mean uh, at uh, Smart uh, Setup for Creative Testing. So yeah, creators, creative testing, and uh, analyze your creatives. Gotcha. So um, you mentioned creators or influencers. Uh, TikTok, just like YouTube, Instagram, have a vibrant community of those folks, people who have big followership, uh, folks who trust them, trust their opinion, uh, listen to what they have to say, what they have to suggest, and hence how the whole influencer uh, marketing does work is the system to um, market anything including mobile apps. So tell me about your experience of working with creators, with these guys who are helping to um, propel specific app to the audience and connect. Uh, any any more memorable moment from that experience? And did you, like, I know that some folks, uh, some app marketers strictly running ads on TikTok ads as a platform. Some people do influencer marketing campaigns with creators. And some people kind of are combining both. Uh, so they start with working with the influencers and then using the same content with the consent of those influencers for TikTok ads. So what was your experience? Um, did you use both or one of those and any memorable moment from that experience? Yeah, 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 sure. But before, again, before I start to answer, I just want Absolutely. to give you like this explanation from my uh, point of view, there are still a difference. Uh, when it comes to influencers and creators, because uh, influencers, they like influence and creators, they create. So, and this is actually a difference because when we uh, started work with uh, creators on TikTok, we wanted to adjust our experience working with influencers, for example, from Instagram. And we were focusing on, for example, on those guys who have like, uh, some number of followers or something like this. But then we understood that TikTok, it's like, it's not really matter how many followers you have since your content is 
uh, entertaining. So that's why we were thinking maybe like the number of followers is not really important. Maybe we need to focus on those guys who can create something that our audience will pay their attention to. And this is something like this is super easy, right? But we understood that this only like uh, when we start working with them and when we did a couple of mistakes. And one of the mistake was that we were super focused on number of followers and we were uh, was super focused on the script that we had because we saw that we know what they should say and how they should say and how what call to action to use and blah 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 and then we understood maybe because tiktok is all about creativity we can give them more freedom and when we did we succeed so of course we gave them like um some information about the app, uh, about our USP. Of course, we uh, collaborate with those guys who were like a part of dating community, but then they started to use super nice insights that we couldn't even imagine of. And that was like a super great achievement for us. So now I would say 90% of all our content created by co creators on TikTok. And we do in different, uh, we can use different options. For example, we can use Spark ads when creators posted those specific post on their site. In this case, uh, this ads looks not so commercial, more native, but I also run it from like TikTok ads manager on top feed and it also, so we, we use both. I would say the main idea here, the insights, the charisma, uh, and the trend that they they used within um, the specific videos, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, this is the the, the super great insights that we uh, got. And I know that some of advertisers can say, okay, but we don't have this resource to work with creators. We don't have resource to find them, to communicate them, to manage them, and TikTok knows that. So that's why. Uh, TikTok gives you uh, 100, not 100, but a lot of different options. For example, they do have this TikTok creative marketplace. This is the platform, official platform from TikTok, where you can find creators, communicate there, and launch the campaigns right inside the, this platform. The other thing that they uh, can give you, if, for example, you have uh, the TikTok support from the platform, uh, they do different kind of creative program. For example, TikTok Creative Challenge. Again, you just need to create a brief, give some information about your product. And then I believe we got like, hundreds of video per weeks from different creators. Uh, and this is like super nice. I mean, uh, the platform knows about this uh, bottleneck and they do their best to help advertisers to, to, yeah, to deal with this. So my suggestion would be, yeah. And uh, as I mentioned, 90% of all videos, uh, yeah, we create with uh, the guys uh, who are the part of uh, community on, on TikTok. Yeah, so thank you for this clarification and difference, uh, pointing out the difference between influencer, influencers and creators, because um, it, um, I remember the moment when that wasn't uh, that of a, a distinguishing between these two notions, but it is crystal clear by now that with influencer, you're not expecting that person to create something specific for you, for your needs. Uh, creator, basically kind of a, like a freelancer, so to speak, for you, uh, somebody who's working outside of your company. He's not a freelancer, like a, a scientific um, no meaning of the word, but he's the talented person who knows what does work for his or her audience. And he can actually do that for you. He's creating uh, content for yeah. you. And uh, then I see why TikTok is um, that different from other platforms, not only because of the nature of the platform that, uh, as you say, it doesn't focus, it doesn't stress on the uh, number of followers. It actually kind of a sidestep to side. And the most important thing, how engaging the content is. Yeah. So hence, you're not for hunting down folks who have millions and millions of followers. 
you can work with guys who are really talented to create something great for your app. You stick with these guys or girls, and this is how you succeed. And uh, from what you're saying, it looks like TikTok has kind of a built-in influencer marketing platform inside the platform. Usually, yeah. uh, like in the case of Instagram or YouTube, you would have to go to the influencer marketing platform, uh, open an account, look for influencers, uh, run the campaign through that uh, platform. But on a TikTok, you don't have to go anywhere. You just go to the platform because it's built in. You're using yeah. the internal tool to reach out to those folks, yeah, work yeah, with them, uh -huh. and they manage all the workflow for your for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. So that's why, yeah, this is a super smart. And this is like, of course, we understand why they do this because they want us as advertisers to invest our money oh, yeah. on their platform. But yeah, but this is like a super great uh, tool and 100% uh, we should and we use it. And I also want to uh, add to my previous answer that we didn't get the confirmation of the hypothesis that creators with more followers perform better when it comes to paid ads. So 100% like, yeah, work with like micro creators and if they know and they know what works on TikTok, you will uh, succeed with them as well. Got it. Okay, uh, let's move on. I, in a nutshell, any marketing is about four W's. What, to whom, where, and when. Uh, I don't claim the copyright for this term. I, I think I heard it many years ago somewhere. So what can you tell me about to whom part? the targeting on TikTok ads, how does it work? What filters do you have? Uh, like, um, is it uh, on par or better than the meta ads have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to say that TikTok is getting older. So every year the number of mature audience increased. That's why it's not like a kid platform anymore. And when I worked at TikTok, uh, I had like a dating client whose audience was like a quite mature for one brand, it was 45 and for other, it was 55 and then six and they succeed on TikTok uh, also because the number of brands that are focused on this core uh, on the audience is not uh, really great. So to sum up, I would say that you can reach any kind of audience. Of course, it also depends on the niche, but if of your app, of your product. But if we speak about like beauty or e-com or uh, fitness or lifestyle, 100% you can reach your core of the audience on TikTok. TikTok uh, has um, a couple of restrictions and it also matches with their main like um, goal and idea. For example, you can't uh, promote any kind of political stuff on TikTok because they really pay attention to your experience on the platform and they want you to, to be happy and joyful and don't want to overwhelm you with this kind of information. Um, our core of the audience since we are dating is 22 till 35, but again, I use broad audience, even though the system gives you the same, you can use lookalike, you can use a different kind of interest, behavior, uh, still broad audience work better for me simply because uh, by your content but 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 your by your videos you can impact the specific core of your audience you want to reach so no need to limit yourself uh, just my suggestion would be to pay great attention on the piece of the content and uh, understand, okay, with this specific video, we want to reach this specific audience. What I mean is the age of the model, the age of the guy who are speaking on the video can impact and impact the core of uh, the audience that I reach. For example, if there is like a guy uh, 20 years old so then the core of the audience that I will reach within the female audience will be like in their 20s so that's why uh, I would say of course you you can and you need test and understand what works better for you but at the end of the day what I saw from my clients and what I see within the, the industry broad audience is, is uh, the king but you need to pay super great attention on the um, 
uh, quality of your videos. Um, you also always can use, because TikTok also have this kind of tool that called audience insight, uh, where you can get some insights about audience, for example, number of uh, users within specific geos, uh, users within different age, genders, uh, numbers of users that uh, use app on Android and iOS. So this kind of your site you can get, but then use broad and yeah, pay more resource on the quality of your videos. Got it. So uh, this is very interesting observation about the um factoring in or factoring out interests when you're narrowing down your uh, campaign on TikTok. Because the, you know, originally I mentioned the meta or Facebook ads, the idea of having interests as the filter for your campaign initially looked great. Uh, and um, it looked like this is the way you can really narrow down your campaign and address uh, and, and talk directly to the audience you're looking for. But if you think about it really hard, you would understand that in many cases, uh, those data points uh, that uh, show you what interests people have actually do not represent their real interests. They could like a page or something you know, years ago, and that data point is still sitting there showing that that person allegedly does have an interest in a specific topic, but that's not true anymore. And if you're trying to rely on those data points, thinking that you're, oh gosh, I'm going to be narrowing down my campaign really nicely using all those interests, you will be just deceiving yourself because it's not going to work. You will be believing that you're uh, narrowing down your campaign as it should be. You're not uh, talking to the wrong person, but in reality, it's not going to work. So if you're just putting it aside and just like you're saying, sticking to the uh, demographics, um, device uh, operating system of a phone you're you're, you're um, um, running your campaign for that would be meaningful filters because that would be objectively true interests they're nice but they may or may not work they would be just uh, kind of a unpredictable uh, variable in your equation so that's that's smart so you go broad and you have a better chance to succeed yeah, but I also want to add, it's also because how algorithm and optimization work on TikTok, because uh, when it comes to TikTok, it's all about videos, right? But not like mm -hmm. some images. So that's why the system can understand your preference more quicker. I remember when I just start work with TikTok, uh, what I did, I just opened the app and I was just, okay, so I just want to understand for how many minutes or hours they will get right. my preferences. And you know what? In 10 minutes, uh, at first they uh, show me some like celebrities or something like this, and they, they go deeper and deeper. And in 10 minutes, they got my three preferences, CrossFit, uh, Stand Up, and Dogs. And come on, this is, was like my first touch with the app and in 10 minutes. And this is crazy. So this is also like um, right. a really right. nice um, point that I want to flag when we speak about TikTok. Uh, you can um, get quicker results using this, this platform simply because the algorithm and optimization work in this quicker way, I would say. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, finally, let's uh, zero in. Let's focus on creatives. Um, I would say it's both art and science. Art because you have to brainstorm, tr try different ideas, see which was, which ones do work, which ones do not. And obviously, science because you have to measure uh, your ad campaigns and see how those uh, great ad creatives perform. Uh, not relying on your assumption, but uh, measuring, okay, which one of those do engage and do not engage with the audience. So um, what are your approach to work with creatives? Um, yeah, I already mentioned that you always need to analyze to get some details about the videos. For example, you can use the tool that called Video Insights and get some answers there. Uh, but I want to give you an example because uh, when I worked for Tami, Tami, this is uh, a dating app for LGBTQ+. And I remember when I started running campaigns, uh, I was thinking that, okay, I don't have this uh, option to uh, some kind add the preferences, right? So I run the broad 
and I understood that within my videos, I need to somehow reach the core. So what I did, I started dive deeper into the comments that uh, the users added um, in my in my ads, and I saw that there was like a number of comments that this is not like something for me. Why I watch these ads and blah blah blah, and then I understood that okay, we need to change something, and for the first three seconds, we need to give the to users a hint that this is specifically for this community just not to waste their time from one hand and from the other to reach specific core of our audience. And we came up with a very it's super easy and simple idea. Uh, but what we start doing, we asked our creators uh, to call our audience from the very beginning. So they were like, are you a girl looking for a girl? Or are you a part of the LBTQ plus? If not, keep scrolling. And this is was like, this script works so great for us that in six months, my uh, TikTok support team came to me to share some trends. And one of the trends was th this specific uh, script. And our competitors started using this. And I was just, oh my gosh, but we, we created this. And there was also like, okay, we part of this community as well because we just uh, create trends as well. So uh, answering your questions, dive deep into analysis. For example, I also uh, see a great color coloration between um, the sound that I use and how this sound impacts the cost per action. For example, this if this is a trendy sound and a lot of users use it uh, in North America in my case, this helped me to uh, decrease cost per action. Once this is not really popular, cost per action goes up. So, I mean, you need to got the specific details and then know how you can uh, use it, adjust and scale in future. So I would say a US user acquisition manager, your main job to run creative testing and have this smart setup. And from the other hand, dive deeper into creative analysis to understand what works better for you, why and what you can scale. Okay, got you. So with this question, we're wrapping up the first part of the show. And because you're new on the show, uh, there here comes the second part where I ask a few questions to every new guest. So our listeners uh, have a chance to know them a little bit better. These are just quick questions. Uh, so here we go. What smartphone do you have now? Are you one of those folks who are sticking to one side of the equation, either Android or iOS, or switching back and forth? <laughs> okay, I use iPhone uh, 15 Pro. Uh, I did once. I used Android for one year and a half. But yeah, I mean, definitely I am an iOS person. Uh, I don't know. I just used to it, and I don't think that I'm going to switch to another side again. <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, jump back a little bit and back in time before the first smartphone, uh, those uh, first mobile phones, which we could put in our pockets. Do you remember uh, from that era, which phone you did, did you have back then? Yeah, yeah, I do. And it was uh, Alcatel. And I remember that the color was a really nice. It was light green, really, really beautiful. But I guess, yeah, this is the only thing that I really like about it, and that's all. <laughs> all right. So this, I think it's the first mention of Alcatel on the show because people <laughs> traditionally recall Nokia, Nokia the snake. <laughs> uh, they, were, they used to play the battery that lasted ages for today's standards. Back then, we were still complaining, but today we would be so delighted when you don't have to recharge your phone every night. Yeah. Um, all right. Imagine you left your smart, your iPhone 14 Pro at home for whatever reason. You're out. Uh, what is the most missing feature for you at that point? Uh, I don't. I, I mean, I I I, tr I like to do this. I, I have a dog, and for example, when I have a walk with my dog, not always, but sometimes I leave my phone at home. Oh, good for you. Because 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I really just want, you know, to just have this. Uh, I heard that Gen Z call it clean walking. And I was just like uh, joking that, oh, my God, even though I'm a millennial, I still have something in common with Gen Z. And uh, yeah, just because, you know, you have a lot of notification information and everything. So but I guess uh, the thing that I really miss, this is like listening to music. So maybe there is something that, uh, yeah, sometimes I miss. But again, I do it in purpose. Just I just want my brain to be here with my dog to focus on something that uh, surround me. So, yeah, but this was funny with uh, clean walking. I was just saying, OK, what's next? Clean eating <laughs> or something like this they will come up with. Clean dating, clean eating, clean yeah. sleeping, yeah, clean exactly. working. Um, oh, I don't know. One hundred percent. That's a fine. Con that's a very funny concept. Um, all right. Um, is there something on your phone? Um, I'm not specifically asking uh, uh, any feature that uh, give you more. Probably will give you a better balance with the device. What would make your iPhone 14 Pro a better tool for you, hardware, software, uh, something specific, specifically for you, not necessarily trendy, but would make it a better tool? Um, really good question. But I think that AI and machine learning, there is something that will dive deeper into it and mobile apps as well. And I believe that AI will be like a good friend who can predict your needs personalized content and uh, I don't know, your doctor, your coach, your uh, tutor, your everything. I mean, I guess, yeah, we are, we, we are already there, but I guess every year we will be closer to, to, to it. So yeah, can't like say something specific, but believe on this field, we will be uh, yeah growing. <laughs> Yeah, I can totally see like uh, later this year, probably next year, all of a sudden this year he would tell you, sorry, I was quiet for all these years, but actually I have a lot of things to, to, to tell you. Um, I was just shy. Let's have a talk. I can actually talk to you. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> all right. Before I let you go, how can people get in touch with you and get more information about what you do? Uh, yeah, sure. Super easy. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just type Ina Sumovska and yeah, open to any kind of connection to share my experience or learn from you guys as well. Terrific. Ina, thank you so much for coming on the show and spending time with us. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you. And that was Ina Samovska, Senior User Acquisition Manager at Hiley. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher. Just listen for Business of Apps. Uh, just Excuse me, just search for Business of Apps and you will find us easily. Remember, we release episodes on Mondays. So subscribe. You will be getting episodes of this show on your device as soon as we release it. And please don't forget to leave us a review or comment on iTunes. It is highly appreciated. And our episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.